pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you for this meeting again that we're able to meet on the Zoom forum. Be with us as we listen to the information on uh, life insurance, education, and savings. Lord, I pray that you be with uh, Brother David Melville as he presents. I also pray for those who are planning to join that may hasten to join us and get the benefits. Thank you for this, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, today I would like to introduce um, Brother David Melville. He's an elder at our church. So he will be presenting uh, some life insurance uh, products concerning uh, wealth creation, education, and uh, just many, many more, many more things. So, um, Brother David, Elder David Melville, uh, over to you. Okay. All right. Maybe before you start, I can uh, just give a brief overview of the group. Okay. The group is um, called uh, Association of Zambians in North America, which includes Canada. So we, uh, we have members from uh, every state in the U.S. and in Canada. I've seen one member from Canada log in here. So we are uh, quite many are expected uh, that we'll be, we'll have a good uh, presentation. Hopefully people will be joining. So we do have uh, our, our structure and uh, we do have uh, uh, what we call chapters. These are like a group of states <clears throat> grouped in a um, block of regions. We call them chapters. So we have uh, uh, representations in um, uh, every state. Well, we don't have members in all the states, but we do have representations in all the states. So that's how our group is formulated. It includes Canada too. Okay. Thank you. You may take it up from here. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. I greatly appreciate this opportunity to share with you. Um, <laughs> I've been, I've been a little bit of myself. I've been with New York Life. This is actually my getting into my third year, but I've been doing financial services for more than more than ten years. I did had my own financial agency. I primarily dealt with property and casualty, some life insurance, and in addition to some long term planning. Okay, and then I moved over to New York Life because. I got tired of people complaining about their auto insurance and home insurance keep going up. And I had no reason for, you know, the insurance company said, well, the state allows us to increase it. So we pass it on that, that increase to everyone else. So, but by working with New York Life, it gives me more resources to actually, in most situations, I'm bringing a check to my clients, okay, at the end of the day, and which is much more beneficial. And I help them with a lot more aspects of their financial planning. Now, uh, for this presentation, I'm gonna share my screen with you. That up. Okay. All right. All right. Um, normally what we do, we do this in normally four parts. Um, okay, and I'll explain <coughs> as, I, as I go along. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about life choices, which basically is, is a life insurance seminar. And like what Evan stated, my name is David Melville. I written, I'm with New York Life and I Life Securities. Our office is located here in, uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts. I mean, in Westboro, Massachusetts, and that's my information up there. Um, the best way to reach me is by my cell phone, which is 508-736-8809, or you could email me, okay, if you have any questions, concerns, or, you know, and need more information. Okay. Now, the question is, do you need life insurance? I mean, life insurance is one of those things that people don't like to think about. You know, some feel that 
you know, they need it, but really don't know why. It's just something their parents or elders have tell them to get, and they aren't really entirely sure how much they need. In addition, there's confusion about the type of life insurance and for how long it's needed. Some of the common misconceptions that many people have um, is that, hey, I only, you know, it's only needed when you're young. Okay. I don't need more than my current salary. You know, and if you tell someone, hey, take a million dollars worth of insurance. I'm not worth a million. Or they may say, you know, my work coverage provides enough. And also, also it might, might be only beneficial if I die. And, you know, my spouse doesn't work, so they don't need life insurance. I'll just get the cheapest thing. I just want you to raise your hand if you have any of these thoughts around life insurance before, or are there any thoughts I didn't even mention about life insurance? I mean, for us, we are required to insure many things throughout our lives. We are required to insure our home, your car, your health, which is a big one. You know, we all make sure we have health insurance. Okay. Even our cell phone. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of you have a case for your cell phone, even a screen protector of your cell phone, you know. But, in most, but for most of us ordinary people, aren't required to insure ourselves. In most cases, our own lives are the most important asset. Why is that? Because everything surrounding your life is dependent upon your ability to produce income to provide for yourself and your family. You are your most valuable asset. Think about it this way. If I give you a machine in your house that is producing 50, 100 or 150,000 a year for the next 15, 20 or 30 years, how much would you insure that machine, machine for? The answer would be you would insure it for, for what it's worth, for what it produces. Well, actually, you are that machine. You may make more or less over the years, requiring more or less life insurance protection. But proper protection is based upon your total worth. And you have choices and options when it comes to protecting your most valuable asset. I mean, some of these, these choices are very difficult. Some could be easy. But what turns a difficult choice into a less difficult one is having guidance yeah. from a trusted yeah. resource. Uh, now, as I said, um, normally we do this in, in several, several different aspects. You know, it's like a four seminar procedure. But the question is, life insurance is looked on as a product, but it's usually more than that. It's a fundamental part of your overall financial strategy because it's the foundation, okay? A pyramid is generally built with a wide, strong foundation that supports everything that is to build, be built up top it. A financial strategy is much like a pyramid and it's critical to support all aspects of planning for potential financial success. Okay, some of you at this, this stage in life, you might be layering bricks for the foundation. Other, or some of you might be approaching the middle part of your planning, working to prioritize your financial goals to make your next stage in life. Regardless of where you are today, a foundation of financial security must be in place for potential financial success to follow. Life insurance is a key piece of that foundation. We call it def defensive planning. Okay, that's the one aspect. Okay. Now, this layer protect, provides assurance that your plan is safeguarded and will be there when you and your family needs it the most. Defensive planning is the foundation of your financial strategy. It consists of protection for your income, your home, any debts or loans that you may have, and most importantly, the ones you love most, your family. I mean, protection can be provided in several different ways, but 
it's important to make sure your defensive plan is built with protection that provides money for the things most important to you and your family today. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, the thing you need to make sure is, you know, you got enough to cover your living expenses. It should definitely be income tax free. It should be protected from creditors. Okay. And it should be easy accessible. You know, life insurance can be the most affordable form of protection. The main goal of life insurance is to protect your family's standard of living if something were to happen to you. It can be used to replace income, to pay your bills, and do all the things the money you earn does if you weren't there to earn it. The last thing any, any of you guys want, okay, and lady, is, is to think is to leave your leave, think about leaving your family or losing your partner, and that can be the, one of the reasons why many of us don't get, purchase life insurance. But having the right life insurance protection in place can help you overcome those thoughts and actually replace them with peace of mind. Now, believe it or not, there are really two basic types of life insurance. This temporary term protection, which is much like renting an apartment. Okay, term life insurance is temporary and it's designed to provide protection during critical periods, but doesn't provide long-term advantages like equity. Term insurance provides protection for a limited time and pays a benefit only if you die during the term. As a result, it's often the most affordable type of coverage when initially purchased. Then you got permanent insurance, which provides cash value protection. The life insurance by permanent life insurance by contrast is, is like owning a house. Okay. It's designed to provide long term protection and generate bills of cash value. And it's a resource that you can use to pay for your child's college, a wedding, your retirement, or even help for an aging relative. Now, and say so you consider term if you're looking for versatility, it's temporary, it's guaranteed protection, it gives you flexibility in choosing a period, you know, whether you want to last 10, 15, 20 years. Okay, the premiums are very affordable. Then you got whole life, um, which gives you a permanent insurance protection for your family and living benefits. Okay, it gives you long-term protection. It's have an accessible cash value. The premiums don't ever increase. And in addition, you have um, the option of getting dividends, which New York Life's been paying for the last 106 to six consecutive years. Okay. And the, the tax advantage includes um, its tax-free debt benefit. Okay, and tax deferred cash value growth. Now, in addition to that, we got universal life, okay, which is give you a customized approach, okay, most long-term protection for your dollar, okay. It allows you to adjust it, you know, as time goes on, as your family needs changes, you could definitely make some adjustment. The tax advantages include a generally tax-free debt benefit along with tax-deferred cash value growth. Then you got variable universal life, okay which is if you're looking for life insurance with market protection and participation. You know, this actually actually works with the market. Okay. In addition to variable universal life provides the opportunity to build a supplemental retirement income through access to other markets. And it gives you that, you know, you could get into it without a large, you know, amount to invest. Now, variable universal life, that only could be sold with a prospectus. You know, we got to give, you know, outline a plan saying, showing you exactly how it's going to work. And also it involves mortality and expense risk charges. The cost of life insurance um, per thousand a month charge. You got a month, monthly contract charge. You got a fund charge. And some of them, if you surrender the policy too early, there is also a, a fund. Okay. 
Now, all the products that I talk about. Hey, Melville. Yes. I, I am going to mute everybody. Please uh, ask yourself. All right. Thank you. Okay, let me get my mouse back the way I want. Okay. All right, like I says, each pr product has unique characteristics and one is not necessarily better than the other. It all depends on the life insurance need that fits within your unique financial strategy. Okay. Many of my clients do rent to own, meaning that they purchase first term, okay, and then they convert a portion of that in the near future. And I explained to my clients that this, this could help with budgeting. Okay, it gives you the most protection that you need based upon your budget that you have at the, at the current time. You know, and then as, as life progresses and things change, you could definitely make changes. Now, oh yeah, one thing I need to mention. Um, with our, our term, it's like, like I said, it's rent to own because as time progresses, you could convert that into permanent insurance, okay? So you get a, get a part of the permanent aspect because at either stage in life, you may need some type of insurance at some stage in life, okay? Let's say you might be a multimillionaire, okay? Here in Massachusetts, anything more than a million dollars if you die with having more than a million dollars, that's, you know, you take in consideration, you might, your 401k, you know, your home that might be still in your name, you know, and some savings and stuff, you might e easily be worth more than a million dollars. While upon your death, your estate will, if you own more than a million dollars and one, million and one, your family owes the, your estate owes the government of, of Massachusetts $160,000. You know, and they have a sh short period of time to pay that. So that's why I say you may need life insurance at every stage of your life. It depends on what you want to cover or protect. Because you don't want your family to have to take your house and put it on a short sale so that they could pay off the government $160,000. You know, that's hard, your hard-earned money that you work for. Okay. Now, which is best for you? I mean, there are types that cover basically need... Um, Life has multiple needs, you know. So everything is based upon each individual aspect. Now, everyone, well, in this Zoom world has a unique situation, you know, and life insurance plan should reflect that. The product or products you choose for your plan should have one common characteristic. They will be there when you and your family need them the most. That is guaranteed. This is why you want to work with a company like New York Life. Okay. We've been around since 1845. This is not our first pandemic. Okay. We've been, the company is built for times like these. Mutuality, mutuality uh, if you should know, means that we means we focus. You can't buy us on the stock, in the stock, uh, on, traded in the stock market. Okay. We focus only on our policy on owners, and that's for, for the life of their policy. We've been paying our dividends for the past 166 consecutive years. Okay, next month, when they declare their dividends, it'll be 167 consecutive years. Now, in addition, now, if there was a major catastrophe that uh, we control the NBA pension and the, N and the NFL pension, so if we have to pay all of that off today, every single policyholder that we have, every single retirement account that we cover for, for individuals and families, okay? We can still open our doors tomorrow with over $30 billion in assets, okay? All right. And in addition, we have a wide selection of products and services that we provide for our families, okay? I mean, this is just a, a snapshot and it says, the foundation to your financial to your financial planning, you have to protect, you know, what you own, what you owe, those you love, and yourself. Okay. Now, New York Life, at New York Life, every decision that we make, every action that we take 
has one overriding purpose, to be there when you, our policy owners, need us. We have been protecting our policyholders since 1845. And the financial, financial rating may be very important, okay? New York Life has the highest financial rating for any insurance company. Okay, we triple A rated across the board, um, except for Standard & Poor's, which actually give us um, double A rating. And that's because if you remember back in 2008, when, when we had the financial crisis, they stated that no company could have a higher rating than the sovereign nation is under because they have to downgrade the US government. Now you could check this all out by going to nyl.com, you know, to read more about our products and offerings. Okay. Um, at this point, if you have any questions, I could try to answer them in, to the best of my ability. Um, how we do business here at New York Life, um, we, have, we do a team approach to, for every single client. So when, when we do when working for a client, we consult, we have accountants, we have attorneys, um, and each of, each of us is usually specialized in many different areas. Um, collectively, in my office, we have over 100 years of experience in this business, you know, helping families, getting from defensive planning all the way to accumulation and decumulation. Um, in most situations, you could work for a lot, go to a lot of different companies like Merrill Lynch, Dow, you know, Edward Jones and stuff. All of them are going to work with you in reference to accumulation, but very few, none of them know about doing decumulation. When you get to that point where you need to start taking your money back out to make it last for as long as you want it to last. So at this time, um, let me just stop the screen share and I could answer questions that you may have. Any questions? Remember to unmute yourself. Oh, I'm muted? No, the people to speak. Oh. They have to unmute themselves first before they speak. I guess uh, the obvious question is, what's the average monthly um, contribution. I know you said it, it, will, it obviously to depend on the type of um, package. Uh, could, you, could you give us just roughly an idea on the different categories of, of the range? Okay, give you um, the example. Um, I can't show you anything because unfortunately the, all the stuff that I have have people names and stuff, which I um, I usually just do it on an individual basis. But give you an example. Um, one of my clients, his his daughter was born last year. He took out a policy for her. He is paying three, he two policies, paying three um, one hundred and fifty dollars a month each, which he's gonna the one the first policy. He's going to pay that for 20 years. And the second policy, he's paying it for 30 years. Now, the reason why he did that, so at the end of 20 years, that policy finished paying for. But he says, this is for my daughter when she graduates from college. She could, she have access to the cash value in this policy, do whatever she wants with it. And the policy remains. Um, we actually call it a million dollar baby because by the by time she gets to full-fledged adult, her coverage would be a million dollars because of how New York life policy, that's a custom whole life. And then the second one that he did for the 30, he said, okay, this is when she's ready to get married. She could take the cash value. It should have um, more than $30,000 that he could take out that's tax-free, no, no questions asked. You know, For example, many of our kids may get married and like the wedding, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 and we taking out a loan or trying to figure a way out to do that. Well, he did it. This is done by paying three hundred dollars a month, you know, for the for the for the next twenty and thirty thirty years, and the daughter don't have to pay any more insurance, and that will cover her family upon death. I did. I give give another example. I did one for a twenty seven year old. This is a custom whole life that the person gonna pay for twenty five years. The premium is six hundred dollars a month. That covers five hundred thousand dollars of life insurance at the start. Now they pay for 25 years 
Okay, they're going to pay a total of $200,000 in premium. At retirement at age 65, they're going to take $40,000 a year out of that policy for the next 20 years, which means they're paying $200,000. They're going to take out $800,000 for their retirement, tax-free. Upon their death, they have $500,000 in coverage left for their family. So in a sense, we say, you give us a dollar, we give you back two, and that's the living benefit, okay? That's how life, I mean, a uh, uh, whole life policy works. It gives you living benefits, the cash value, okay? Now, a universal life or stuff like that, which, which is more a market-based product, that based upon the market and how we, in, um, based upon your risk profile, the policy gets designed. So it goes by age and health. The older you get, the more life insurance costs because the company is saying, well, all companies saying, the older you are, the greater chance that you, you're getting closer to death. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I don't know if that answers your question, but also depends what you want, how much you want. And there's many, I mean, like I, I would meet with individuals in, and families to design something for them because it says each person is unique. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I think, uh, will I move you? Yes, I have a question. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how about if uh, something happened to you and you're still paying that? Let's say you get sick or you die and you are paying for yourself and your family member or your family or your family. What okay. will happen? All right. New York Life has various types of policies, at least for our company. All right. You have your, you take out your policy, you're the primary um, owner and you're paying on that policy. Now, some policies have what we call a wave of premium. That means if you get, if you're sick or hurt and can't work, okay, after six, you'll pay for the first six months. But after the six months, you get a, you send us your doctor's note. Well, even from the time you get hurt, you can send us your doctor's note. You would have to pay for the first six months. But after that six months is done, New York Life will reimburse you for the first six months that you pay, and they will continue paying your policy, okay, until you get back to work. But I'm giving an example of how our wave of premium work. Okay. A surgeon had okay. a, one of our policies. Okay. He was properly insured. And while mm -hmm. mowing his lawn, there was a problem with the lawn mower. He, he went to try to fix it. Unfortunately, they came back and cut a couple fingers off. As a surgeon, he could teach. But his primary occupation with, uh, with us was, was a surgeon. Thus, at that point, New York Life covered, paid off his premium for the rest of, for his, for the, rest of the term that the policy is entitled for. Okay. That's how the waiver of premium works. Um, if, you, if you have policies for your kids, then you're the primary, um, and you're the person, and you passed away. Well, unfortunately, if I was your agent and I'm meeting back with your family, I mean, I would have would have met with your family before you even pass away. But then we could talk to them about some of the money that you left back that they could either do to pay up their policy or it depends upon the type of policy that they have. You know, we could make adjustments either way, continue to be paid, paid for itself or, you know, there's various aspects, depends upon the policy and depends what you have in place. But for you as a primary um, policy holder, there's waiver of premium to cover you there's um, in some policies we have some long-term care coverage in it built in that gives you a living benefit that you can access money to help cover some long-term care if needed but all depends upon which product is you choose and that's with guidance of you know of a trusted advisor okay how about if you decide to reallocate to go back home where you come from well that actually works a whole lot better to your favor because if you take that, if you take out life insurance to cover you 
and protect uh -huh. your family here in the United States, okay, wherever you are, it's going to cover you because now you, that you, whatever dollar amount you, you had here, whatever uh -huh. the, the value is, you know, you are covered. Um, you're covered anywhere outside the United States as long as your policy starts here in the United States. Um, at least for here, for New York life here in the United States, you have to have a bank account in the United States to pay the premiums. Okay. You know, but you're covered anywhere. And that's why you actually work with an advisor because to make sure they, we always in contact with our clients. I, I try to meet with my clients minimum of once a year, unless they tell me, hey, I don't want to talk to you. You know, but I try to meet with them, you know, as often as they would let me because there's always changes going on, you know. Okay. Um, you know, I know some of us, you know, like to retire to go back to our home countries and stuff where it's mm -hmm. much more relaxing and our dollar, car the U.S. dollars carried a whole lot further. But you are covered anywhere outside of, in the United States and outside of the United States. Okay. And I have no, no problem, in, you know, getting on a plane to deliver your check in person, you know, wherever you are. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, you should take any of those products, whether it's permanent or or t term policies, uh, to qualify. Do you have to go through medicals, or how does it work? Yes, they do require medical, um, and it all depends upon how much coverage you're taking out. Um, like basic, um, you know, they may require blood work or your medical records from your doctor because they want to make sure that the information that you provide to us is basically true to the best of your knowledge. Um, excuse me. And why I say to the best of your knowledge, today you you put in an application for, a, for an insurance policy and I forgot which one of these companies got sued for something like that. But okay, today you put in an application for a policy. To the best of knowledge, you are healthy as you know, okay? during the underwriting process, okay, which could take anywhere from one week to maybe two or three months, you know, depends upon how quick your doctor and stuff respond. Now, six weeks later, you find out that something, something is wrong with you. Well, unfortunately, that's, how should I put it? That's, that's New York Life has to eat that. Because to the best of your knowledge, you, you had no problems with you when you put in that application. You did not know that, you know, they did some test. You know, you went to the doctor four weeks later, he did a test and said something is wrong. Okay. So you're covered. You're conditionally covered. I mean, it, once you put some money down on that policy, New York Life is on hold for whatever coverage you have and you want. Okay. And you may just lose the access of the money that you put in for that short period of time. Because once the policy comes back, you still have an option that says, I don't want it. But while it's on the writing, you are conditionally covered. I don't know if that answers your question. It does. Thank you. You're welcome. But should any of you require more um, for me to look at your situation? I, Currently, I'm right now I'm licensed in seven different states, and I do have advisors that I work with throughout the United States that, um, you know, we could assist you in, a, in a whatever way, shape, or form, okay, so that you could get that personal touch if you so desire. Some of my clients, since this Zoom started, they prefer just to meet with Zoom because it's a whole lot easier for them. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it's just a personal preference. I hate to bundle a life insurance with savings, uh, term life, a uh, uh, whole life, right? or even universal and things like that. I, I just don't, don't, don't do that. Uh, so, what would be your best advice? My, 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 my feeling is that I want uh, to separate life insurance with from savings. Uh, I, I know that you know there. Are, times that I, I think that probably I'm not disciplined enough to, 
to have life insurance and savings at the same time. But I, I, I just think that whole life is especially expensive for, for younger people. Uh, like you explained, I think it, 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 it becomes better because in the end, you know, it's almost uh, balances up. What, what is your feeling about uh, just having life insurance term separate from uh, savings, uh, investment? Let me just put investments. Uh, well, um, in because, essence, because then you have both of them. Should you die, you, you, you have your term life and then you have your savings to, to, give, to give to the people. Okay. Well, normally you're supposed to have three buckets of money. That's where your money is supposed to be. You got, you know, one that you need for emergency fund, quick access. Then you have your, um, your tax later bucket, which is your 401k, you know, which you're saving. Okay. And then you have your, your permanent insurance. But on, you, you just, you age 25, you just start your, your company, you just start your new job. Okay, you're making $70,000 a year. You're looking, you know, you guys are planning for your retirement to say, you know, you got your house and stuff. Um, where, where permanent insurance would comes in, because while that insurance is growing, while your um, 401k is growing, okay, because whatever it grows to, you're gonna pay taxes on your 401k later on in life when you go to take it out okay it grows tax-free okay it goes in tax-free but when it come out taxes are, are due okay our whole life policy is not necessarily an investment but it's a tax-free bucket something like your mutual like mutual like if you buy municipal bonds or stuff so like that it gets to grow you you pay for your coverage but at some point it exceeds your coverage because the money that you put in you could take back out. That's why we say, you know, it's not, it can be used there for anything that you need it for and it's tax free. Okay. Like the example that I give with it, with a 26 year old who's going to be paying $600 a month. That's just one bucket. I would still recommend you definitely have to do be in the market. Okay. But this is just another bucket of money that you could have because in your retirement, let's say for instance, in your retirement, Okay. Say you had retired this year when the market went down at the beginning of the year and stuff like that. You don't want to be taking money out of a down, you know, when your money is down. So you could go to your other bucket, which is your whole life insurance, which was growing cash value, because you could take money out of that without any penalties, without any taxes. Okay. On average, our a whole life policy with New York life basically grows on average from four to 7%, all depends on how it's structured. Okay, but it's, that's just for your safe money. The money, I mean, it's like, I, I've, I've had my clients money that they have sitting in the bank, not doing anything. Okay, getting less than 1% in a new, like, new York life, whole life policy. It give you you buy more for your dollar and it's it's growing a little better, but it's something that's not for it's for long term needs, not short term needs. Things that you may need, you know, 10, 15 years is highly recommended. But you definitely need to have stuff in the market, whether you're doing 401k and IRA, you know, SEP, you definitely need to do, but it's just one of those buckets you that you should have. And it's tax free. <clears throat> um, Elder Melville. Well, yes. Let me wait. Maybe Dr. Munin has more uh, contributions. You go ahead. No, okay. Thank you. Um, on this, I think on this group right now, most people are looking. Um, we our children are grown. Um, I think we're looking at uh, our retirement and uh, other things. Uh, so what products would you recommend or is that topic for a different session? It could be for a different, a definite different session because we could talk about at that point when you look into your pre close to retirement. Um, like last year, I was talking to a lot of my clients in reference to those who have like their 401ks. I talked to a lot of them in reference to 
taking some of the gains off the table, okay, because you can put it into something that's going to be more secured, okay, because someone that's, you know, within five years of retirement, your, your portfolio you need to be readjusted, okay. So as you know, your kids are grown, we still looking at what you're gonna need later on. Um, some, you could take that 401k and turn that into a lifetime income, you know, part of it, so that you know every single month you're getting so much money, whether to be cover your living expenses, at least you know that is guaranteed while some other part of your money is still working. So it is, I said, it, I would have to sit with each individual, look at, you know, look at what you have, where you want to go, what is your time horizon. Um, you know, I even, you know, sometimes I try to guide people on how to remanage their 401k that they have because most companies, they don't give you that much time in showing you how to manage. Some of you may have monies that sitting with an old company that you left there, you know, and just, you know, may want to put, take that and have where you have more control and where it's doing more for you. But everything, you know, each stage in life is just, it, it changes. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm, um, I, Chris, I beg for forgiveness. I may ask a stupid question, but are you saying universal life insurance is the same as index or is it different? Uh, sort of. Um, um, I w I'm not extremely familiar um, with the universal life products that we have. I mean, I do um, sell them and I do consult with my team because okay. it's, it all depends upon the company mm -hmm. and how, it, how that, the funds are invested. Um, with New York Life, the reason why most of our products are pretty strong and stuff like that is that in addition to life insurance, which is our primary stuff, we also, have, New York Life owns 10 different companies that helps to give us this financial strength. Most, comp most insurance companies out there, they may own one other company, but we have a big market that we use to keep our, keep our financial strength because all life insurance, according to the federal government, their, their structure is based upon bonds. And if you know anything about bonds, um, like they just, I think it was Denmark, just sold their 30 year, their 30 year bonds for negative. You're gonna pay, the money you pay for today, you will not get back in the future, it'll be less because the bond is down. Okay, so that's why we, Base our structure and our financial strength in the companies that we own that they are producing so that it also helps to cushion us. And we are very, it's a very conserv conservative team um, with a team of advisors that they have that's working on, you know, making sure the company's strength is, is maintained. So it, you're, um, to do those policies, one, we need a risk profile to see what your risk tolerance is in reference to making sure the funds are based upon your risk your risk tolerance. I can't just give you a policy saying we're gonna put it all in equities because that may not be your risk tolerance and that would definitely be against the law. But Thank for you. that, you do get a, a prospectus, which gives you a general idea of what the policy can do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Uh, I have a question. Uh, you said you you have your presence in different parts of, in different states in the U.S. Uh, do you have a partner in Canada or, or not? I don't. I could definitely, I could definitely check on that because um, I will check with my, with our team to see who can, um, if you, you could either reach out to me personally at dmelville at ft.newyorklife.com and I could get the information and send that to you. Um, New York Life is definitely in Can Canada. I know they're in Canada. 
um, but I I haven't don't recall. I know that I mean I've talked to people in Hawaii and the Philippines, agents for New York Life that we all meet on a weekly basis, but I could definitely check on that for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yeah, I got a question here. Um, you mentioned something about the 401k. Yeah. Uh, suppose you worked for a company somewhere and uh, you left and years have passed, maybe let's say 10 years, and you know that you are contributing to 401k and the company was matching up with that. And then you do not, you do not have... Uh, information for that company you worked for and how to contact them and you don't have information of how you can find out about what your balance is for your 401k what are you supposed to do yes yeah, so you just contact the company they should they have to give you that information um if you if you have any old statements depends how you might have access your policy most of us could access our stuff online and go back in and see our balance um but if you Instead of leaving with a company, I would definitely, if you have all 401ks, is, is sit down with an advisor and you move that into something that you have control over. Because if something should happen to that company and they go out of business or whatever mismanagement of funds, you may lose your money. Okay. Um, just like you would not, you know, leave your wallet with that, with that company full of your money, you should definitely take your 401k when you leave. Okay, and we have access to everything. Basically, once we know the name of a company, we can look at their 401k plan and tell you, you know, some companies 401k plans are pretty good. Some companies are not, you know, but you should definitely take control of your funds and you could call up the company, uh, search them on the web, get, contact HR, and they should be able to tell you how to act, get access to your funds from that managing company. So, uh, Brother Melvin, in, in other words, once somebody finds that uh, fund, they can roll, roll it over to New York Life. Yes, or any company that you so desire you want to work with. But mm -hmm. You could roll it over to where you have full control of it. Thank and most so companies much. will not tell you that you could take your money out when, they, when you leave. They like to let it stay there. You know, you might be paying more fees than, you know. I mean, there's small fees in every, every 401k plan. You know, and it all depends how your funds were diversified. So if I heard you correctly, thank you so much for that response. If I heard you correctly, when you're talking about life insurance with New York Life, uh, there are several types of uh, life insurance we can get into, depending on what I may need. Uh, what caught my attention is uh, uh, if you said uh, that you can have life insurance policy uh, where you can uh, build equity in it and uh, can be used uh, in the future. Uh, can you shed more light on that, please? Right. Give you an example. Um, that's a, a whole life policy. I'm just going to start by the basic. I mean, it, it, could be, it could be structured in many different ways. Okay. Um, New York life, whole life policy. Number one, all our, our profits is shared with our policyholders as dividends. We are not a stock company, so we don't, we're not concerned with that, with, you know, for the next quarter because stock companies are only focused on making enough money to please the stockholders at least every quarter. We focus on our policyholders, okay? And our dividends, we've been paying an average of approximately 6% every year for the past 106 or six years. Now, um, and our a, a whole life policy in New York life has what is called indirect recognition, which means you start your policy, you're paying your premiums, and then 
from the, just the basic policy, based upon what you're paying when it started and everything else, maybe in 20 years or something, you could stop paying that policy. And because of the growth of the dividends in it, it could start paying for itself. Now, you, okay, you take out a policy. Today, I'm just being, this is all broad and hypothetical. In 20 years from now, um, okay, how should I put it? And like in 20 years from now, you might, um, your, your daughter or granddaughter or whatever is getting married or finishing college and you want some money or say the roof on your house needs to be replaced instead of going to the bank okay the based upon the cash value that you have you can use up to 90 percent of your cash value in your policy without closing the policy and that's a simple phone call hi hey david um i look at my cash value i see i got um fifty thousand dollars in cash value uh, i need twenty five thousand dollars okay in a couple of days that money's in your bank account tax-free you could pay it back if you so desire or not that choice is yours but your policy is still going to grow, get its dividends as if you never took that money out. But at, at the end of the day, at the end of your policy, you, then they, if you never pay that $25,000 back, they'll take that $25,000 off of the money that they're going to give to your family. But in most cases, once we show you an illustration, it's always more than what you started with in the first place. But uh, I, I have a problem with that, though. Yes. It, it, it was my money. And, and uh, am I borrowing my own money? Yes, you are borrowing your own money. And the reason why that is considered borrowing your own money instead of you taking it out, because the gains, if you take it out, there's tax implication. New York Life says, hey, you're going to borrow this from the general fund, but it's based upon your policy. Okay. So that you, there's no tax implication in it. Because you put in the money to cut for, for the initial cost of the money was to cover that debt benefit, as a, you know, which was guaranteed. Okay, it's gonna grow more than what you started, but there's around it because you're gonna take out money more than what you actually put in. Just like if, if you're 401k, you put in so much money. If you, once you start taking it out, they pay taxes. If you take out more than what you put in, if they give it to you straightly, you pay taxes, but given to you as a loan, you could go to the bank today and borrow $10 million in loans and you don't pay it. And for that, for, the, for your life of that loan, that is not considered income in your, in your, on your taxes. So that's why it's, it's structured like that. So I have a question. What's the difference between the whole life policy and, and IRA? IRA is, is strictly, um, in the United States here, you could the max you could put in your IRA is six thousand dollars a year in an IRA. Um, you know, for one k, you could put up the maximum for years of nineteen thousand dollars for an individual. Uh, a whole life policy depends how it's structured and how you design it. You could um, you could sh shield more money from the government and allow your money to grow a whole lot more without it being a modified endowment contract. So really the difference is how much you put in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. A Roth IRA, like I said, you're limited to, I think it's 6,500. Mm -hmm. Your 401k, you're limited to 19,000. Okay. Uh, but there's an age uh, catch up, right? Yes, you're allowed to put a little bit more, but it's not that much. Excuse me, sir. Can yes. you be less technical? Uh, because like some of the terms, like you said, modified contract endowment, those things. I remember this group, it's like uh, it's zero knowledge. So you're, you're <laughs> a little sorry. bit too technical. So go very, very basic. <laughs> OK. Well, yes. If you put too much money in a, in a whole life policy, where now that money is more than, it's growing more than what it should. You're allowed to put in up to uh, seven times your premium amount, you know, in some of the policies. 
if you put in the past, the reason why the government changed that because in the past, rich people would what we call deathbed planning. Yeah. You know, closer to death, they like they would pull all this money out and put it into their life insurance, where it grows a little bit more, and then when their family get it, there's no taxes. You see, and so the government only allow you to put so much money in without being so being taxed, and that's why. When it starts being taxed and gets too, too high, that's why that's what they they call, you know, a modified uh, contract because now it's it's taxable. But most, I mean, most of us will not do that because number one, you'll have an advisor that's going to be guiding you along the way and say, hey, let's you know, not shield so much money. But um, a whole life policy is your third bucket of funds that you could have. It's readily accessible. And it's just there. You, you plan for that in 10, 15 years and stuff like that. That's where it is planned for. You know, your 401k bucket, which is that tax deferred later, that's something you put in there and you expect to get that in 20, 30 years down the line. Uh, on that note, what provision is there for 1099 individuals when it comes to 401k provision? Is there a provision for 1099 self-contracted uh, employees? Yes, um, I do. I work with a lot, lot of um, business owners and small businesses. Um, you know, as a contractor, there's, there's various plans that you could use um, for retirement. You could also, um, we do a custom whole life for, for small business owners in the sense we look at that like, you if you could hire an employee, okay, you're gonna pay their salary for the next 15 years, but if they get sick or hurt or can't work, someone else pays their salary. Now, after 15 years, you could fire that employee, no, no problems, you know, no retribution. Then when you come to retirement, that employee pays your pays your income. So there's different ways. Um, just you know, we have to sit sit down with you individually and design something for you based upon your needs and your family's needs. But ten nine to nine employees definitely, we work with you. A question. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to decision making as to, you know, how one can now proceed, whether insuring with you or with another company, how can you help me um, raise my awareness of the various types of insurances that are there? Are they also insured? so that when they go under, I don't go under with them. Um, one, I mean, if, you, if you're working with New York Life, we'll work with you. Um, at the end of the day, I would, I would meet with you on an individual basis, see exactly what your needs are. And, you know, my team and I will work on a, a, a strategy for you, a solution that says, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what this will accomplish this for you, you know, this time period, this would accomplish this. And at that point, I bring back the solution and you could decide whether or not you want to work with New York Life and myself, or you may say, hey, Dave, I thank you for this information, but I'm going to go with another company. Um, I mean, I could give you, I could show you the financial strength of other companies. Um, some companies have changed over the, over the years. I mean, 20 years ago, there were over 9,000 different insurance companies, uh, and it's dwindled down over the years. And even some insurance companies currently now are not taking any new applications. Excuse me, what's your consulting fee? Zero. It, I ask for referrals. <laughs> Thank you. You know, word of mouth, if you like what I do for you and okay. or you think um, or you may and how I work, just give me, you know, referrals, you know, tell your friends, 
your enemies because even your enemies need you know good advisors can we can you deal with us as a group and um could it be more beneficial to us if if we approached you as a group or individuals no, for your organization because you are not um like w2 employees for that for an organization um we i could work with you as a group but you will not get like group benefit like group rates unfortunately um it's different i like, say like the southern new england conference or the northeastern conference or any conference of the seven day adventists the, the majority of the employees are W-2 employees. So for them, that's how a group program will work. Um, but for your organization, since you're not W-2 employees, you don't get a group rate discount. So um, maybe to add on what uh, Ramoa asked. So that's, uh, I talked to uh, Brother David about that when we are looking for uh, the group insurance. So that's one of the, the barriers. New York Life does not deal with uh, uh, individuals unless, like he says, we do have the W-2s, which we don't do as a group. So, and he can do that with uh, individual, individual products. Um, I think we can, we only, we are, it's, it's over the hour now. Maybe we can allow one or two more questions uh, before it would, uh, Melvin winds up and uh, he'll let us know um, how we can move in the future. If you have another session, you can probably look at that. We can allow one or two questions. I have a quick question. When you compare, I know whole life you're kind of trying to create wealth uh, compared to the term. But when you compare in terms of age, does that really matter when somebody's in younger compared to somebody who's maybe over 50 or over 60 when it comes to whole life or term life? Yes. Either one, based upon your age, you pay. Um, the younger you are, the less you pay. The older you are, the more you pay. And if you have any health impairments, that also affects your, the cost of insurance. Okay. Um, the, dif the difference is with a younger person with, with a whole life policy, it gets, gives it a chance to grow a whole lot more because they're paying less. It, I mean, either one, either insurance will cost less. Like the, like the example that I gave with a 26 year old, that person covered for $500,000 is um, 600 and something dollars a month. That's 26 year old. A 38 year old person for that same amount of money, they're gonna be paying more than a thousand dollars a month. If I wanted that policy at my age over 50, it'd be a whole lot more money a month, okay? But every, as I said, it's all based upon age and health and how it's being, how it's being structured. Those, those, that that twenty six year old that was a custom policy, which means it's designed only to pay for a short pe for a period of time. Once that 20, 25 years is up, that person will not be paying another penny of insurance. And in that example, that individual would have paid two hundred thousand dollars into insurance. Okay, at twenty five years later, they would have more than a million dollars worth of coverage. And then at the same time, they could take $800,000 out tax-free, which in, for this bucket of money, uh, to get that, able to do that with your money in the market, you will have to be getting growth every single year. There cannot be no downturn in the market for you to get, you know, to, get to that level tax-free. But you know, it's, everything is structured individually based upon your individual needs and everything else. But it's just, I mean, whole life is one bucket of money that, you know, that you're looking for. Okay, you do definitely need to be in the market. And then also some of your money gonna be in the bank where it's not growing anything because that is for your emergency fund. 
So can one have uh, multiple life insurance policies? Yes. With different companies? You can have it with different companies, but all the comp each company you go with gonna ask you if you have life insurance with another company. They like to know, make sure, you know, they just want to know. You know okay. But you could have it with multiple companies. You could have it, you could have multiple policies with one company. I have term insurance and I have whole life insurance. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I want to thank everybody who logged in. Um, but Melville, you said um, we can have another session. Yes, the next one I will do with call is uh, Blueprint to Financial Success. And um, which, you know, we could definitely set that up, which goes into another aspect of your financial planning, because this one just covered the foundation, which mm -hmm. is, the, you know, you know, protection. Then we, we're going to talk in reference to, you know, other aspects of that pyramid. Okay, thank you. So we uh, would definitely let you know. Okay. We can uh, schedule that meeting. All right, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody who logged in. I know you have uh, many questions that have not been answered. Hopefully in the next session, we can, um, uh, we'll have uh, Brother Melville uh, answer some of those questions. I know there are so many uh, products and uh, other areas that we have not touched today. Uh, that's why probably we should come back and listen again. Um, so we will close uh, this session. I would like to ask uh, the to close in prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father, we are grateful tonight for the information that you have provided for sure. Ignorance can be very expensive to us. Mm -hmm. For providing uh, Elder Melville to come and uh, share his knowledge and uh, wisdom with us. Uh, Father, as we continue to see how we can protect our families, how we can uh, live them probably better than they, they are right now or we are right now, we just pray that, Lord, you provide the means to do that. And thank you for everybody that tuned in and those who couldn't. Uh, Lord, we pray that hopefully next time you you, have, you, you provide a chance that they will be on this forum as well. Mm -hmm. You need to be with us in our individual needs and meet us our need. What's this in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 One, one biggest takeaway that uh, the Melville shared is that your life is the biggest asset. It needs to be protected. I know we protect our cars and other small things but your life is the biggest asset that needs to be taken care of. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. I, I just want to say thank you to, to our leaders for organizing such an essential, essential uh, presentation. Like the Mundende prayed, ignorance is expensive. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there are a lot of other expensive choices in life, and I think it would be nice to to have an all round type of presentations over the, over the year. Mm -hmm. Thank thank you again for the initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much, and God bless you.